have you now. What? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times villains celebrated too early. Air Goodman coming at ya. For this list, we'll be looking for times when the antagonists got a little ahead of themselves before eventually succumbing to defeat. We guess a spoiler alert is in order, but it's no secret the good guys usually win. Number 10. Sweet Home Alabama Con Air If there is any group of people who should not be cheering midway through a mission since they've been caught by the law before, it's convicts. Isn't that your car, Malloy? Couldn't be. I left mine at the office. On any other day, that might seem strange. After ambushing a National Guard convoy at an airfield, the inmates decide to celebrate their victory by dancing to a song by a band that happened to pass away in a plane crash. Define irony. Bunch of idiots dancing on a plane to a song made famous by a band that died in a plane crash. What the prisoners didn't prepare for was Cameron Poe, who was secretly working with U.S. Marshal Vince Larkin to take the plane down. I'm the new captain. Put this thing down. Target locked, sir. Don't you do it! Don't shoot! Don't fire. Because of damage done by attack helicopters, the plane makes an emergency landing on the Las Vegas Strip, and Poe and Larkin work together to stop the criminals from successfully escaping. God bless Nicolas Cage. No, 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 honey, it's okay. I got a picture. A picture of you. I got a picture of you, too. Number 9. Daniel makes a heroic comeback, The Karate Kid. Under the instruction of Sensei John Kreese of Cobra Kai, Bobby Brown illegally strikes and injures Daniel LaRusso's knee in the semifinals of the All-Valley Karate Championships. Kreese smirks in the background as he believes his prize student, Johnny Lawrence, will be named champion. When the cocky sensei accompanies Johnny to accept the championship trophy, they are stunned when Daniel's son miraculously makes his way back to the mat to fight for the title. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we've been waiting for. The present day. Daniel LaRusso is going to fight? Daniel LaRusso is going to fight! After Daniel gets the upper hand, Johnny reluctantly sweeps Daniel's leg causing his competitor to go down in serious pain. As Kreese yells for Johnny to finish him, Daniel executes a successful crane kick to defeat Johnny, Cobra Kai, and the bad guys. Number 8. Sydney Turns the Tables. Scream. What's the matter, Sydney? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Why are you doing this? It's all part of the game, Sydney. When Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker come forward as the serial killers known as Ghostface, a helpless Sydney Prescott is left to watch in horror as the duo revel in their madness. Billy and Stu confidently reveal their plan to kill Sydney and her father. Your daddy's the chief suspect. We cloned the cellular. The evidence is all right there, baby. What if your father snapped? Your mother's anniversary set him off and he went on a murder spree, killing everyone. The overconfident duo begins to inflict themselves with stab wounds, celebrating what they think is a crime they will get away with. Yeah! I'm ready, baby! And I get up! Get up, man! Get up! However, if there's anything the Scream franchise has taught us, it's to never underestimate Sydney, who escapes their wrath and defeats both Stu and Billy. Don't mess with Sydney Prescott. Uh, I always had a thing for you, Sid. Oh! 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 In your dreams. <laughs> Number seven. Thank you, Chuck Norris. Dodgeball, a true underdog story. 
One of the greatest upsets in cinematic history almost never happened because of a potential forfeit. Even though Peter LaFleur joins Team Average Joes right before the championship dodgeball match, the trophy is awarded to White Goodman and the Purple Cobras. Too late, LaFleur. Your lovable band of losers already forfeited. The trophy and the money are mine. Well, he's right. Your team is already forfeited. There's nothing you can do. Woohoo! Facial LaFleur! Total facial! White's celebration is cut short thanks to a loophole which states the match could continue with a two thirds vote by the committee. That's not true. The tournament committee can overturn the chancellor's decision. That's you, sir, by a two thirds vote. No, well, he's right. What? He's right. Yes, oh, it's a bylaw. It's a. It's a bylaw! What's a bylaw? With the vote at 1 1, Chuck Norris emphatically casts a vote to play much to the crowd's delight and White's dismay. Thumbs up, Average Joes can play! This dude poppycock, you can let them do that? Thank you, Chuck Morris. Thank you, Peter. This wouldn't be the last time White experiences the agony of defeat as he loses a sudden death match versus Peter right after his costly mistake of stepping over the line prevents the Purple Cobras from winning in regulation. Continuation rule 113D, sir. Sudden death! Oh! All right, bring it! I don't believe it, folks. Sudden death. Number six, Boris is not invincible. Goldeneye. When facing James Bond, maybe the villain should wait until they complete the mission to declare victory. For England, James? No. For me. Ah! While Boris Grishenko attempts to regain control of the satellite in order to attack London, Alec Trevelyan tries to stop James Bond from sabotaging the mission. Trevelyan gains the upper hand and has Bond at gunpoint, but decides to gloat and say, You know, James, I was always better. Before shooting, Trevelyan misses as Bond uses a trap door to escape. Bond eventually defeats Trevelyan and destroys the base. Boris, who narrowly survives the explosions, yells, Yes! I am invincible! The excitement is short-lived as liquid nitrogen ruptures in the lair, killing Boris instantly. Losers like Boris never win. Number 5. Scar's pride leads to his downfall. The Lion King. Long live the king. If Scar kept his mouth shut and let Simba fall off the rock, he would still be the king. However, the egotistical lion could not refrain from provoking Simba, revealing it was he who killed Mufasa. Here's my little secret. I killed Mufasa. No! Dead set on revenge, Simba charges up the rock and gains the upper hand on his uncle. After fighting off a pack of hyenas with help from friends like Timon, Pumbaa, Zazu, and Rafiki, Simba corners Scar and forces his uncle to leave the Pride Lands forever. And how can I uh, prove myself to you? Tell me, I mean, anything. Run. Run away, Scar. And never return. Once again, narcissism takes over, and Scar attacks Simba again. However, Simba is ready this time and throws Scar off the rock, where he is attacked by hyenas. No, let, no, let, 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 let me explain. No, you don't understand. No, I didn't mean. No, no, I didn't understand. No. Long live the new king. Number four, the faculty forgets about Marty, the cabin in the woods. After Dana Polk is presumed to be the only survivor of the attacks of the cabin. The group who planned the ambush, led by faculty technicians Gary Sitterson and Steve Hadley, celebrate a successful ritual with beer and tequila. That's so much heart. You think of all the pain and the... Tequila is my lady! My lady! Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. You're welcome. However, they made one fatal mistake. They didn't confirm the removal of one of the members at the cabin, Marty Mikulski. Hi. After Marty saves Dana from trouble, the two survivors make their way into the lab, where they find all of the monsters that eliminated their friends. How does that help us right now? What? 
No, if you have a confirmed kill, take her out too. With revenge on their minds, Marty and Dana release all of the monsters in the facility, and they eliminate the entire faculty. Let's just say it didn't end peacefully for Sitterson and Hadley. Oh, come on. Number three, Yippie Kaye, Hans, Die Hard. After thwarting his operation throughout the entire film, Hans Gruber finally has John McClane on the ropes after kidnapping his estranged wife, Holly. Well, when you steal $600, you can't just disappear. When you steal $600 million, they will find you unless they think you're already dead. Put down the gun. Set to walk away with over $600 million in bearer bonds, Hans relishes one last opportunity to attack McClane. You got me. Still the cowboy. Mr. McLean, Americans all alike. Well, this time John Wayne does not walk off into the sunset with Grace Kelly. Feeling as if he has won the battle, Hans laughs and points his weapon at McLean, quoting the same line said earlier by the New York City detective, Yippie Kaye. Enough jokes. You made a pretty good cowboy yourself, Hans. Oh, yes. What was it you said to me before? Yippie Kaye. Before Hans pulls the trigger, McLean laughs uncontrollably, distracting Hans long enough to hesitate. McLean takes advantage of this mistake by pulling the gun secretly taped on his back and firing at Hans and his accomplice. McLean saves his wife while Hans takes a tumble off the building. Well, I hope that's not a hostage. Number two, I am Iron Man, Avengers Endgame. After wiping out half of the population in Avengers Infinity War, Thanos receives a second opportunity to snap his fingers and ruin the world in Avengers Endgame. What I'm about to do to your stubborn, annoying little planet, I'm going to enjoy it very, very much. After Thanos overpowers Iron Man, the Mad Titan regains the Infinity Gauntlet and confidently claims that he is inevitable. Thanos snaps his fingers, which means goodbye to millions of people. I am inevitable. However, Tony Stark successfully removes the Infinity Stones from the gauntlet before the snap occurs, leaving Thanos with a look of complete shock. I This time, humanity gets the last laugh as Iron Man snaps his fingers with the stones on his gauntlet, which leads to the dissolution of Thanos and his army. We love you 3000, Iron Man. What am I even tripping for? Everything's gonna work out exactly the way it's supposed to. I love you 3000. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions that remind you to not count your chickens before they're hatched, bad guys. Simon Phoenix Freezes, Demolition Man. <laughs> Jafar is outsmarted, Aladdin. Aren't you forgetting something? You wanted to be a genie? You got it! What? And everything that goes with it. No. Face melting power, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The putt that fell in, Caddyshack. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Voldemort makes a huge mistake. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. After casting the curse upon Harry Potter, Voldemort believes that he finally defeated his arch rival. Harry Potter is dead! <laughs> <laughs> And now is the time to declare yourself. With an evil and overconfident smirk on his face, Voldemort leads a procession with Harry's corpse at the front of the parade. 
The Dark Lord demands that the students join him or vanquish. Come forward and join us. Or die. Before he attacks the students, Harry's spirit magically rejoins his body and leads his fellow wizards in the fight for humanity. It's over! After a lengthy battle, Harry deflects the curse off his body and onto Voldemort, destroying the most dangerous wizard of all time and winning the battle of good versus evil. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.